guys have some rewards for buying in that you've seen, some fruits of your labor, you know, versus when your staff came in and mm -hmm. you didn't have a lot of that. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's been something that's amazing to be a part of, but I'm trying not to get too caught up into it, just try to keep the main thing the main thing, obviously, because you don't get those things without winning games, without playing hard, uh, competing. So uh, we're just trying to keep the main thing the main thing. And, uh, but it's definitely been amazing just being a part of it. How do you sort of stay hungry and, and, and have a, a sense of the program that everybody's still clawing for the same thing? Yeah, <clears throat> Coach Heifel set out a goal. Uh, he wants to, we, want to, we want to win the East. So we haven't done that yet. And uh, we haven't even started day one at camp. So there's nothing to really be uh, you know, cocky about. So that's how we just stay hungry. It's, it's nothing. We haven't done anything yet. It's a new year. When, when did he present that? And then how explicitly do you guys talk about goals? And how often do they come up in the offseason? Uh, we talk about them a lot. Uh, we have a team meetings. And they come up in team meetings uh, almost every time. Um, but I think it started last year uh, after the season, like the first meeting, the first team meeting back. Um, he set the goal uh, right there, and that's what we're striving for. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? Uh, how do you guys feel about that? What, what is it going to take to get to that level? Um, we, we've seen how successful we could be uh, from last year, so we just obviously learned from our mistakes from last year. But also, uh, there were certain things that we did we, that we know, to be, we know we have to be consistent with. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't really just pinpoint one specific thing, but it's definitely – just learn from our mistakes from last year, but also be consistent with what we were doing. So you're talking about Coach Heibel talking about winning the East at the start of the, mm -hmm. the start of last season, basically. Like yeah, the, well, first the, start, well, the, the first start team of, meeting like February ish. Yeah, February. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of, you know, obviously there were things y'all wanted to achieve last year that you did, but at what point last season did you realize just how much better the team was? Um, while we were playing in the moment, you obviously don't really have a chance to, you know, reflect on it, but. Uh, I guess you could say like a typical answer would be Bama, like would be Bama, but um, during during the moment you don't really think about it. What's been your favorite moment of the off season that sort of exemplifies where you think this program is right now? Um, I've been not a part of team uh, activities, but I think definitely um, just seeing the outing for the spring game, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Fans showed out. Uh, a lot of players got to show show their talent, so I think that was just a fun part for me personally. Mm -hmm. just, you know, not being able to be a part of team activities. Mm -hmm. Where have you seen Dylan Sampson kind of grow in the last year? Uh, definitely, he's grown uh, in the meeting room for sure. Obviously, you know how talented he is, um, but he's becoming more of a leader. He's stepping into a leadership role. Um, you know, at running back, you learn from every type of running style just because you don't know how much this running back style can teach you. So he's he's become a leader in that in that room, and he's just grown obviously with his physicality and just his his mental as well. Is this the healthiest you've been as uh, of recently? Yeah, uh, I just got off surgery, okay. uh, so yeah, I feel good. Does that kind of have you re-energized heading into 2023? Obviously, there's still a few weeks left before the season starts, but kind of where are you in your process getting back into that role? Uh, I feel fine, just taking it one day at a time. You come from a family that's played a lot of SEC football. What was last year like with you know with those guys just kind of sharing that yeah, that it season? Was, it was fun, definitely talking trash, getting a little bragging rights on uh, my dad and my uncle. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very fun growing up in a football family. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of what I was brought up on, so it's pretty cool to, to live. With. How do they continue to motivate you as you continue your career here? Uh, definitely, they just you know through my uh, down moments, even my up moments, just try to stay mellow in the middle. Uh, so they, they've been there every step of the way, and I, I can't thank them enough. The coaches are mentioning a lot how there's kind of like this duo system that's going on. Either it's like Joe and Nico or like the tight end group. Would you say kind of the running back unit kind of has like a duo, whether it's maybe you and Jalen or you and, and Dylan? How does that dynamic kind of work? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say a duo. I think <laughs> everybody supports everybody when they're on the field. Uh, when I'm not taking reps, when Jerry Rice not taking reps, we all support each other because we're, we're one stable. Uh, we're one unit so I think everybody just supports each other and like I told him before we all learn from each other uh, everybody uh, is entitled to their own opinion and how they do things so we all try to pick pick off uh, each other. John, as you were kind of putting last season to bed and you talk about processing things kind of after the fact where's the right combination of maybe appreciating how much better the team got but also realizing that you know so close to being even better? Yeah it's um it's kind of a tricky question just because like you were so proud of like the growth but just how far what the goal was and how far we've come when we're so close to the main goal 
it's kind of bittersweet, but I definitely just appreciate the, the growth that I that I've seen from the team and just being around my guys and how people matured. And, um, I definitely just was appreciative of the moment, but it's, we were definitely close and um, it's bittersweet. I thought that um, my top speed was on 23 miles per hour, but I feel like I have gotten faster. Yeah. Can you run me through how you got the nickname Squirrel? Oh yeah, um, my great grandma named me that when I was a baby. Um, she was holding me her arms and um, it was a squirrel out in the garden picking at her tomato. And um, when the squirrel moved, I moved and we both moved at the same time. So she started calling me that. You like the nickname? Oh yeah, I feel like um, I'm living up to it. <laughs> Do you know any fun facts about squirrels? Oh, uh, they quick. That's all I know. They quick, they get loose. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about kind of putting plays behind you. How do you uh, mentally get over a play and move to the next one? You said what? There's been a lot of talk about kind of like mentally resetting after a play and moving on to the next one. How do you personally do that? Oh, yeah. Um, it's reset. We go as fast as, as um, we go. So, like, you can't really, like, think think back at, like, the play. You just got to, like, keep going forward. So you just flush that play out, the, um, out your head and stuff and just keep going. What do you feel like your chemistry has been like with Joe since last season throughout the offseason? Uh, it's been great. Um, we um, come out here, um, put in extra work on the weekends and stuff. Like, we just hang out together, like play video games. So I feel like our chemistry is getting up there. What's the biggest good. change you've seen in him since last season through the postseason or the offseason, sorry? For real, um, just his accuracy. Like, his accuracy is, like, is on point now. You, everybody knows, like, he can throw deep, but, like, his accuracy is just um, really A1 now. How did that time on the second team with him last year kind of help you guys create a bond going into this year? Uh, I feel like it um, helped um, tremendously. Um, me coming in um, and him just being a two man, being two, like just uh, since the spring, like we just been um, working and stuff. How much more comfortable are you in the offense just year two, just having, having the experience you got last year? Has that made a big difference in how you feel? Oh, yeah, it made a big difference. I feel like I'm very comfortable in this offense. Like, I just feel like I know what's coming next. Like, the plays are just very easy for me to learn now. And, and how much more confident are you, too, just because you know, the Orange Bowl and some of the other games you made big plays last year? Does that, that make a big difference? Or do you feel like you are pretty confident last year, too? Uh, I feel like I was um, pretty confident last year, but I feel like I got that up under my belt. I feel like I'm more confident now. Yeah, I mean, you, you feel for him. You feel for him because you want the guys that aren't out there to be out there. Um, you want the opportunity to, to get great work. And when someone's hurt, it, it's, it does no good for anybody, and I can speak to that. Um, but not, I mean, you feel bad because you know that people are missing out on opportunities. Um, but that's it, really. In terms of now, it seems like they've got, like, 800 corners over there now going to camp. I mean, does it seem like you're always going against a fresh body now? Yeah, I mean, obviously we got a ton of depth there now. Um, so I think camp, I, th I think that in preparation for camp, you know, we have a lot of depth. Even at the receiver position, we have a lot of depth. So it's just a lot of good reps for everybody, a lot of opportunities to get better every rep. You got someone that, you got, you know, four vets at receiver, you got four vets at uh, DB. So everybody's getting good work, and it just helps us get better. Thank you. There's been a lot of talk about kind of emotionally resetting after plays. How do you personally do that? Um, I quite literally, like, forget the last play. You know, literally, like, someone asked me right then, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to tell them because it's the next play mentality. And um, for me, it's just like, you don't really reset because you gather information from the previous plays, coverages, alignment. Um, so based on your next assignment, you use that information, but as far as the outcome of the play, you don't think about it. Squirrel said if he has a bad rep, the offense kind of moves so fast that you don't really even have time to think Can't. about it. Is that part of the reason, too? 100%. I mean, by the time you're starting to feel sorry for yourself or whatever, it's the next play. And if you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're not going to get the ball, you know? How do you feel right now a year into the program? Is there kind of a stronger grasp of the offense? Absolutely. And I think there's evolutions to the offense. So as you gain a basic understanding, you can gain a more advanced understanding and kind of know the whys and the ins and outs of the offense. So that's kind of where I've gone since learning it last summer. Lining up against guys in the secondary, has there been anyone that's kind of taking you out of surprise? Taking me out of surprise? Um, not necessarily. I mean, there's guys that like I look forward to competing against. and um, But no, nobody that I've gone out, we do extensive film study, and I do a lot of film study on my own. So you pick up on tendencies and things people do. and. So you try to not be surprised, and but obviously our offense is a little bit unorthodox, so you get some surprises, some different looks. 
but no, nobody specifically. Throughout the whole roster, who would you say has taken the biggest jump from the end of last year to now that fans could kind of look out for on game day? Uh, a big jump? If anyone comes to mind. I mean, not to be bland, but I think everybody. Like, mm -hmm. if you're not taking a big jump, those are the guys getting left behind. It'd be easier to speak to who who's not taking a jump than who has, because everybody's made strides forward. Um, and that's like the team culture we have. It's like we work a lot harder, we play harder. So if you're not doing that, then you're falling behind. Is there an, is there an area that you feel like you've personally improved uh, the most since the end of last season? I think like um, emotionally understanding how to deal with, you know, not only just playing ball, but the highs and lows of football. I, Throughout, I would say, high school and early in college, I was a very emotional player, and it showed. And you, you notice how people can take advantage of that. So, I mean, like, towards the end of last year and into this year, it was just about never too high, never too low, controlling what you could control, you know, all the things that are preached a lot in football in general. How would, how would 